Hey everyone, this is Anna here and in this video I want to show you how I made this cute little tray. I used a GR Pottery Forms, this oval tray and it's really easy to make using that because all you do is you press it into a foam to form the design. So uh, this is kind of like an experiment to me. This is the second one that I made. I've made a little video before, uh, I think it was a short that I did uh, on how I use the stencil to make a little rectangular tray, not using the GR pottery form, but just doing it by hand, hand build. Um, so I wanted to try it again. I bought a bunch of stencils, as you can see. Um, I'm just showing you the different stencils that I got. I can put a link. Uh, most of them are from Amazon. Uh, the one that I've chosen to use was Temu. Um, stencil very tropical so i bought several so that's the one that i've chosen and i already had my slab cut out i cut a little bit bigger like maybe a half inch bigger than the form that i used <clears throat> these are just some more stencils some are small if you want to make something small um, but they're really cute so i wanted to really start using some of them uh, and of course I haven't fired yet. I will put the results. Uh, I will probably change the picture on my video once I fire, but I thought I would share the process with you because I thought it was so easy and it turned out so cute. Um, so here I already have my underglaze. I use ultra white and mix them with radiant red to make the pink color as a background. So that's the first one that I'm gonna paint. Uh, so I should have used less of the red. It turned out to be a darker pink color. Um, and I had pink also I could have used, but I just wanted to experiment the red and the white to see if I can get a nice pink. Um, one, another thing that I noticed here with this underglaze, the ultra white, even though it's high in pigmentation, but um, it's really thin, the underglaze, for some reason. I don't use that many Amaco underglazes. I use mostly Duncan. I have a few Amaco and some Speedball um, underglazes, which are more opaque. So I think in this case, you would benefit for using more of an opaque underglaze. So here I'm just trimming a little bit more of the edge. And I'm using a plastic uh, saran wrap just to smooth out the edges. It was kind of hard to lift it because the clay was too wet. Um, and so I, I just laid the plastic just to smooth out the edges on each side of what's going to be my little tray. And you see how it is really thin. So I had to, I ended up using three coats of this underglaze. And I had to use my uh, heat gun in between in between quotes, but I think I might have done it too much. Like you don't want to, you, you do want to dry in between the coats, but I think I went overboard to where the clay was also drying real fast. Uh, but I was doing for the sake of the demo here. And then once I was done with the third coat, it was too dry and I ended up spraying a little bit of water just so that the stencil would stick a little bit. So, and I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would just wait until the underglaze dries, but not completely dry off. So the the right time is when it's dry, but it's not, it's still a little sticky, but not too sticky. That what I did is I sprayed the water and I put the stencil right away over the water. And of course, when I rolled to, to make the stencil stick, the underglaze peeled off a little bit, which is okay on the design, but you see that when I lift the, the stencil, it was just too sticky with the water. 
So I wouldn't recommend spraying water. <laughs> Here, I'm just spraying water on my underglazes. <clears throat> and again, I use um, Duncan underglazes, which are translucent underglazes, but if I would do it again, I would use some more opaque underglazes. And I think Amico and Speedball is the, the ones that I've used. They tend to be opaque, not the translucent like these. Uh, Duncan Easy Stroke is what I'm using here. And by the way, the, the little uh, palette uh, container that I'm using, is it works great. Um, I think I have shared with you guys on previous videos. I will put the link for that again. It's a little bucket that you can put all your brushes uh, you is the blue container you see on the side there, um, but the, it works great. I find myself using that all the time now when I'm painting, and it keeps my underglazes in there, and then I just spray water when I want to use them, almost like watercolor, um, so it's great for that, and it has a lid, so it keeps them. I mean, if you Keep it for too long, it will dry out eventually, but it keeps for days uh, without drying out. Um, so anyways, you see that I had to go over a few times to really get the more opaque uh, look for the leaves. And I will probably speed up so you guys can see. It will be a little quicker on how I just... Not really any, I, I try to blend in some colors, um, but pretty much just painting with underglazes, not really any using a particular method, just v varying the colors a little bit. So it's not like just one color. I like to use, you know, I use different shades of green in here. Uh, then for the the other leaves that look like palm leaves. I used a, more of a blue tone, the, the Monstera I'm using more green tones. And then for the flowers, I'm using a, more of an orange mixed with white. So here I'm done with the painting and I just have to lift off the stencil carefully. So I did in one side and then I went to the other side and start lifting from the other side. And don't spray, again, I'm just repeating what I said before, don't spray water on top of the underglaze like I did. Don't do what I do. <laughs> Uh, because as you can see, when I lifted in some areas that got really wet, the stencil, of course, uh, peeled some of the, the background color. And I didn't have much left over, so I tried to, I didn't want to mix again, because when you mix, I, I just poured a little bit of pink and white, uh, not really measuring. So if I would mix it again, I probably wouldn't get the right shade. So I was trying to just use what I had still on that tray when I mixed the two colors so it wouldn't be a different shade. But I had to do just a little bit of touch up, as you can see here. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, the colors and everything. But one thing to keep in mind is I'm using a red clay. It's called Terra Red from Artvark. 
Uh, it is a real deep uh, maroon reddish color when it's all done and fired. So I know the colors are going to look darker on a darker clay. Uh, that's just something to keep in mind. I think it would have worked better on a lighter clay or even a speckled clay clay body like I've done before, my other little tray. I'll put the link here for the other video I have, uh, which I think is just a short for the other one that I did using a stencil. <clears throat> and that one turned out really nice too. It, it was a lighter clay. I will put the picture here also for you to see. Uh, we insert the picture. Um, so the colors, the underglazes, I think they look better on a light clay body. Uh, we'll see how this one turn out. I, I imagine it's going to be darker, but it will have that rustic feel. Uh, and of course, I am only going to use uh, my Kitten's Clear Glaze, which is the glaze that I always use. Uh, the clear glaze, I mix, I mix them, um, and I do have the recipe posted on my, uh, on the community tab. I can include that also on the description, the recipe for that clear glaze that I'm going to use, but I do expect the colors to be much darker because of the dark clay. So this is what it looks like when it's all done with the painting and now it's ready to be pressed with my GR pottery form against the foam or you can use other wooden forms that they sell at other craft stores uh, just making sure that it's centered on the clay and you just press into that foam. So I just pressed it a few times just to make sure it really took the form of the tray and then you just um, while the the form is still in place I cleaned the edges and pressed it a little more compress compressing to remove some cracks I got on the back so I love using this uh, red mud tool rib it's one of the softest ones that they have, I believe. It's the red one. It's very flexible and it's great for smoothing the clay and really compressing like the sides and the foot of your piece. I also use the rib when I'm uh, done with trimming. I compress to give that burnishing look on the, on the clay. As you can see, it's very smooth. And then you just turn your piece side up and remove the form. Another thing that I'll do next is clean that edge so that it exposes about like maybe a quarter of an inch of the very edge and also cleans out the some of the, the underglazes that get underneath the stencil right at the edges. Sometimes that happens. So it cleans out the messy edge and giving that finished look at the same time. So here is what it looks like when it's all done. You can add a foot also uh, if you like. I prefer with a foot, uh, but this one, since it's just a test and a demo, I didn't use, uh, I didn't put a foot on the back, but... I did do it on another one that I'll have uh, another uh, video on the other tray that I did. So I added a foot on this other tray and I do think it looks better to elevate the piece. All I did is I used the same slab to cut a strip of about a half inch and I attached that to the bottom rounding off the edges so it looks better that way. And I pressed the clay just to add a little special touch to the tray. I will have another video on that tray using cuerda seca uh, in one single firing. So that will be my next video. And thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.